Hey guys, what's going on? Happy Sunday. I thought I would do a stream on Sunday, which I've never done. Normally I do streaming on Friday. I wonder if my internet is doing terribly though right now. We're gonna see. I'm getting a little red, red indicator on the OBS, so we'll see if this actually is going to work out particularly well. But um, in any case, we're gonna try it out. We're gonna have some good, fun times doing some programming. Um, the thing that I wanted to do today, uh, which I didn't exactly update my exclamation point project thing, uh, which I should really do, but what I wanted to do is change the library that we use inside of CockroachDB to use a different and better connection library thing called PGX than uh, libpq, which is sort of an older, more standard Postgres connection library that is missing some features. So it's a little bit, you know, some work to do, but it's it's got some exciting outcomes that I'm going to tell you about in a little bit. Hey, Cypher, what's up? Your intro video reminded me of this playlist that I love. <laughs> well, what is it? Should I click it? I'm going to click it. Your stream yesterday was really fun, by the way. Um, that game is super fun. Oh God, there's ads. Cyber reality, synth wave, retro wave, chill wave mix. <laughs> That's a lot of waves. Oh yeah, 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 exactly. This is precisely the sort of vibe. I feel like, speaking of vibes, call me crazy, but I feel like this current playlist that I'm listening to is like way too intense. So I'm gonna chill it out to this other playlist that I like better. A known playlist that is less intense. A big wave lover. Yeah, hell yeah, dude. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, that game, man, I have to say that that game is really, really, really fun. I, I did watch somebody play it, I think at the latest GDQ thing that they did. And it was really nuts, man, because what they can do if you're really good at this game is that you can play the whole thing without dying on double speed. <laughs> and not only not dying, I think you only have half a heart, so you can only take one point of damage and then you immediately are dead. So it's pretty intense. Um, I have never understood how people do in, insane video games, stuff like that, but it was pretty fun to watch. Hardest beats in that game are absolutely nuts. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so um, so um, let's see. Uh, you know what sometimes happens that's a little bit frustrating for me in OBS is that my key shortcuts stop working. Like they work for a little bit and then they don't work forever. So for example, my little key shortcut that's supposed to turn on my iPad whiteboard is currently not doing anything. <laughs> so I'm not sure what the deal is with that, but um, I really wanted to show off this beautiful, beautiful Twitter image that I already posted to Twitter, but also draw something else. Anyway, it's not important. You're looking to watching some runs of that once I played through it, yeah. I think, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of, a, it's a long game. I don't know if I ever really beat it to be honest. But kind of the thing that I wanted to do is, uh, yeah, there's this thing called PGX. Um, it's a Postgres driver that is really nice because it supports all of the different fancy Postgres features that we also implement in CockroachDB. Um, and libpq is sort of the standard Postgres driver that supports only a few of these features. And the thing that, the thing that got me started on this, um, just as a quick explanation, is that um, if I run Cockroach um, and I do some query that uses some weird data types, um, so or just any data type really, well, I'll just make a quick little simple table. And if I wanted to um, figure out, just like for sort of de debugging purposes for myself, <laughs> um, what type something is, if I, if I said select A from A, I personally happen to know that this is an integer, um, and I can use explain to figure out what type the thing is. If I add this types parameter, it says a int. But the thing that you don't know that's really been frustrating for me on several occasions is that um, you don't know the like specific Postgres I type ID thing that you can get by asking for it from the type catalog. So if I said select like int double colon 
reg type, double colon OID, I think, I get this number here, which is like the special sort of type identifier thing that is actually really important and nice to know a lot of the time, specific, specifically like when you're doing development, I guess, on the database, but maybe also as a client. Um, the thing that's really dumb <laughs> is that libpq doesn't expose that information. Um, even though on every connection, the database is actually sending back this number along with every single column. So if I ask for five columns, the database is gonna send back five numbers, um, the type ID for each of the columns in my query. So, uh, it turns out that PGX is this sort of better library that does expose that information. So my plan was to try to uh, upgrade to use that in this couple of places where we do actually use this driver internally, which is kind of random. Like, why would you use a driver internally in a database that already has its own stuff? It's just, it's convenient, I guess. Um, and we do do that a couple of places. So yeah, I'm gonna try to check that out. I think there's a couple of problems um, before we get to it. Just one little prefix is that in order to do this, you can actually see the name of my branch here. If I scroll down a bit is failed PGX migration. <laughs> and the reason that it's failed um, is that uh, it actually requires upgrading to this thing called Go modules, which if you're not familiar with Go uh, is, a, is the sort of new standard dependency management framework that Go uses. Uh, we used to use something called DEP, which is kind of like a older, more Hand grown one, or it was sort of like when they were when they were trying to figure out what to do with Go dependency management, somebody made DEP, um, and that's why it existed. That's what we used for a while. Then they standardized standardized on Go modules. Upgrading it was a whole pain in the butt. We sort of mostly finished doing it recently, so that's why I'm excited to say that now I can actually go ahead and upgrade to PGX v4, which requires Go modules. Okay, huge mouthful. Probably not that exciting. Um, where I left off was that for some reason this con pool thing doesn't exist anymore. So I don't know, don't really know why. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and figure that out now. Did they get rid of it or did it move to a different package? I'm pretty sure they, they couldn't have possibly gotten rid of it because I bet it just changed packages or something like that. Um, PGX con pool. Where would that be at? Con pool. It's right here. This is PGX v3, but I think I'm using PGX v4. So where is the PGX v4 uh, con pool is my question right now. Presumably we can find it by searching within their GitHub somewhere. Hmm. Con pool, where are you at? I find it shocking that they could have possibly gotten rid of Confu altogether. <laughs> um, so, thanks to the magic of global GitHub search, we can hopefully find out what the deal is here. Here's a back-end PGX repository test. I wonder if this example is actually using the old PGX, though. It kind of does look like it is. Hmm. Okay, let's just go ahead and try to figure out using, hmm. maybe if we actually just look inside of uh, our vendor dir, um, we can figure out what the deal is here. Jack C, GitHub, Jack C, PGX. Maybe I have to type go mod vendor or something. Is that, did I just like not upgrade my go modules? This is kind of the first time that I'm messing with Go modules, so I don't really know how they work properly. Ah, maybe it's just sort of that there's something kind of broken. So it's telling me, uh, PG Connect imports PG Proto 3 v2. Module declares its path as something, something. Oh yeah, this go package.in business. I think I just need to get rid of go package.in everywhere. This is when I was trying to get it to work without using go modules at all. Go package.in slash uh, pgx, jacksy. Yeah, I think I just need to replace all of these guys with something else. Um, but the question is, what should I replace them with? Jaxi PG Proto 3. So, let's see what they say on, on the GitHubs. Uh, here's an example. 
how do they go about importing this guy? I guess it's in server.go in their example. Jaxi PG Broto 3v2. Okay. Jaxi PG Broto 3v2. Like so. Oh wait, let's not do that. I think I need to include PG Proto 3.v2. My find. Okay. Let's see what happens with that. run my go mod bender and see if that actually improves the situation. It did something. Uh, let's see if my code is happier though. Let's see what happens if I just build out of curiosity. Is that gonna work? Might have to recompile a bunch of stuff. I'm honestly a bit perplexed about how Go modules work. To be honest, I should probably read the documentation. Presumably somebody wrote some good documentation on this, um, but I have not read it. I think what's kind of weird about Go modules is that when you import stuff now, uh, you can actually have this like final version path thing that isn't used as the name for the thing that you're going to import. Like normally with imports, the very last word here is the thing that is the name of the module that you reference later. So normally I'm going to say pgx.blah and that's going to come from pgx. But now there's this like permissible final path thing that I, to be honest, don't understand. Um, So let's see, let's go to this other file, <laughs> just out of complete curiosity um, and see what its problems are. Error is redeclared as imported package name. Truthfully, I think I've like really busted some stuff up. <laughs> oh, I see, previous declaration. Oh, did I just put it twice? I, I think I just have to get rid of that one um, and then get rid of this thing. Okay. The, the problem is that like whatever PGX is looking like now, it doesn't seem to contain the things that I expect it to, which I find a little bit perplexing as well. Um, I wonder, like here, here's the file that I expect to be importing. Here's my package PGX thing. And here's my con, right? So I've got this PGX.con thing sitting in PGX v4. And yet when I try to import it over here, I don't seem to be able to see this con thing, or really like anything at all. Um, so that's, what's the deal with that? What is the deal with that? Let's see, if I go, if I go over here, do they have something called a, he no longer has this pool thing. So maybe, maybe like it just like completely changed its API. Is that possible? Is it possible that Jack C PGX v4 just no longer really has this like con pool abstraction at all. <laughs> hmm. I guess we could look at the getting started guide. Let's take a look at this. So we've got this pgx.connect business, but that doesn't give me a pool anymore, does it? That just gives me a single connection. And I was sort of excited about, oh, here we go. The pgx.con reserved by pgx.connect says a single connection is not concurrently safe. Blah, 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 blah. To replace the connection pool, replace the import with, ah, I see. Okay, so they did add another module called pgx pool and I have to import it in a different way. pgx v4 pgx pool. Okay, so that, that should be, that should explain what's going on. The API did change a little bit, which I suppose is like acceptable considering that they changed from v3 to v4, which seems like kind of a big bump. pgx pool. Okay, so then over here, I should be able to say pgx pool dot pool. What's wrong with that? pgx pool dot con pool? pgx dot con pool? Oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. I think it's just like the way that this stuff uh, is working with Go modules is kind of funky. 
Um, because what's kind of weird is that this the Go imports now turned it back into just github.com jaxy pgx, which does not seem correct to me. I think I'm so I really am supposed to take this whole fat import path like this documentation is saying and get it like pgx pool.connect like this. Um, so what happened? I mean, if I said pgx pool.connect, what does this give? It doesn't even notice it. Do I, did I maybe do I need to like turn on Go modules in in this editor or something like that? Is that my problem? Go modules. Oh, I see. Well, I didn't have the Go modules integration on. I guess that's probably the issue. Huh? <laughs> oh man. Well, that's gonna change things. I wonder if that's gonna like what 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 will happen? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Um. Probably what will happen is that this will have to redo a bunch of internal brain thinking and it'll be unhappy for a bit. <laughs> that is my guess. This is a good example of something that you should probably do before you start streaming. Try to figure out your Go modules configuration in GoLand if you've never done that before. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is typical. Now it's gonna be like, well, everything is red. <laughs> Uh, fun. Re-index the world. I mean, yeah. In the meantime, I suppose we could attempt to like compile things the old way without an IDE. Is that wild or what? What happens if I just run make over here? Okay, yeah, this is, I mean, this is sort of what I expected because I did like edit the code without leaving anything correct. So it's, it's called PGX pool dot what? We don't know what the type is. Um, let's see, so if I edit, um, uh, Jack C, X con pool oh I guess I have both the old version and the new version vendored so that's like a little bit confusing man I'm, I'm honestly really confused about how these import paths work it's really quite perplexing to me because I think I think what's happening is that like probably this conpool thing is another top level no. PG pool rather. Where does PG pool live in this stupid thing? Hey, you're on J1. It's Monday. You're on your way to work. Happy Monday for you. Happy Monday. I hope you're having a bright, beautiful, exciting day. I'm just trying to figure out Go modules, <laughs> a new thing for me. Um, I need to figure out where this PG pool guy lives. PGX pool. Oh, it's called PGX pool, and it lives under the main PGX repo. Okay, that's kind of that's kind of interesting. Okay, so I think my IDE has finished being sad, and now things are looking a little bit better. Uh, I'm really sunk with that IDE support, I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of sad. <laughs> uh, okay, so once that's done, what else is up? p.acquire. So I guess the API for this thing's changed. It now takes a context. Okay, so we'll pass in the context, which we probably have. Do we have a context here? I guess we don't. New multi-con pool. I guess new multi-con pool is now going to need to take context in. Does that even make sense? I guess it does. Uh, that's fine. We're very used to plumbing contexts on this stream. It's, our, it's one of our favorite activities. You can plumb context all day. So I guess this guy doesn't have one though. We can just make make one maybe. Bar CTX uh, context. 
effects.background. All right. Same with this one. Okay, so once we've got our context, we can pass it into this acquire thing, which is great. And now what else is happening? This is problematic because I can't use type con pool as pgx pool pool. I guess that's because we're using the wrong pgx version here. That's really annoying. I wish I could somehow purge that old version completely. That would be better. I wonder who's importing it. Um, maybe like pgx, maybe like a bunch of people are still importing the old jack c and that's the problem. GitHub.com, Jack C, PGX, and I can search for a quote, I think, which will get me. Oh, so lots of people are still using it. That's fine. We can just find and replace them. GitHub.com, Jack C, PGX, quote, and then replace this with PGX slash V4. I think that would be good. We'll see if it works. Certainly it did something, made a bunch of things red, which I think is probably desirable because we were just importing the wrong PGX. And presumably they changed a bunch of APIs. We've got to upgrade. That's the point of this stream. We're upgrading to not only PGX where we want to be, but the new version of PGX, PGX v4. So I think that's expected. I think it's good. Some red, some red in our lives. That's a nice thing. But interestingly, they changed, They, I guess they moved parse connection string to a different uh, package. So we'll have to sort of figure out where that lives now. Parse connection string. It's kind of weird. I mean, I just think that this refactor is like confusing me, to be honest. It's just kind of confusing to me. Maybe if we search for parse connection string here, we'll find it somewhere. Okay, so it lives in con.go, but no longer in jacksev4 at all. Is that what that's saying? That's a little bit annoying, not gonna lie. Although, hmm, I guess it's not guaranteed that we've even vendored it because if they moved it to a different uh, repo or something, uh, search for parse connection string in this user. No code references for this. One pull request. That's perplexing. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. Like. Hmm. Let's go back and read the uh, their sort of getting started guide again. I just feel like things quite quite a bit changed here. Or maybe there's a change log I could read. That's also not such a bad idea. Is there a change log? Change log .mb. So version four, simplified establishing a connection with a connection string. Oh yeah, well that sounds that sounds relevant. So what's the simplification? What's the simplification exactly? Um, so okay, so pgx.newconfold is now going to be pgxpool.new. .connect. I see. So then I guess I can just pass this. Connect makes a new pool and immediately establishes one connection. CTX can be used to cancel this initial connection. See parse config for information on constraint format. Connect config creates a new pool and immediately establishes one connection. Let me close this sidebar. It's probably really boring to look at. CTX can be used. Config must have been created by parse config. So what's this parse config business about? I feel like that's probably what I want to be using instead of what I had before. 
So instead of parse connection string, it's called parse config. Um, that seems plausible, I guess. Uh, so I've got this con CFG thing now, and I want to get a con pool out of it. So I say new con pool. No, this is the old version. Get away, old version. You are confusing to me. What takes a config here? Connect config. Creates a new pool. In, okay, so that's what I want. I want connect config instead of new, instead of connect. PGX pool dot connect config. So it takes a context. And then this config, which I guess I have now created with con CFG. Um, but it looks like what we've done here is overridden some things uh, with max connections. So I guess I'll want to do that as well. Um, okay, so it wants a config, but con CFG is actually something else. It's a con config. <laughs> uh, oh, this is a pool config, and it wants a con config. Okay, that's fine. So I guess I want a pgx pool dot con config. Fill selected fields. I'll put this con config as con cfg. Okay, so it's making some sense. It's just a little bit different than before. I guess this is going to be a pointer. And what we had before was max connections num cons. So we'll do max connections num cons like this. All right, and what's the matter with this? Cannot use type in as type in 32. Well, we'll just cast it then. Fine by me. Okay, so what's next? Next is that we have a problem with acquire, uh, which, why is this problematic? Cannot assign cons, cons in multiple assignment. I think it's probably something to do with our types again. Hmm. So acquire takes a context and returns a con and an error. And what we've tried to do is assign it to con and an error. Unless warmup cons is the wrong type. It's a pgx.con. Uh, which realistically seems right. So what's the deal? I wonder if it's because this long thing here at the top, I don't know if you can see because it's a little small, but it looks like my, PG, my pgx pool import is that like some weird pre-version <laughs> is that the problem i don't know man go modules it's it's kind of different and it's a little bit disturbing <laughs> okay what does it say cannot assign star con to cons of j type pgx con in multiple assignment now why is that what if i just said con comma error is equal to p dot acquire and then I said cons j equal to con. Hopefully this will give me some sort of type mismatch error. Cannot use type con, pgxpool.con as type github.com. Oh my gosh. Okay, so wait, a pgxpool.con is different from a pgxcon. So I guess that's maybe expected. <laughs> Just seems like the API did change a bit. Uh, that's fine. So what, we're gonna change the type of this guy to be pgxpool.con. And then I think that that should fix the matter. We don't know what it'll do yet, but hey, we have to start somewhere, right? Okay, so we've changed the type to PGX pool. Uh, if we come back over here, we now have a problem because there's no such thing as release, presumably. So I guess it's back to the documentation to figure out how one releases a con. Presumably the, I, the API was changed. Yes, I see. So this is why they've changed the type of pgx.con or changed the type of the pools connections to be their own special type. It's because um, that way you can release it from the thing itself and not have to use the pool to release it. So that's like a little more convenient, I guess. And then we don't have to ask for the pool itself. We just release the connection directly. Uh, cool. Then down here, it's the same thing. We're changing pgx, oops, pgx.conpool to pgxpool.pool. Now here we have something new. So prepare x prepares the given statements on all the pools. Um, and it used to be that there was something called prepare x options and that no longer exists. Um, so I've got to figure out now what the deal is with that. Does p even have a prepare thing anymore? 
It does not seem to. So I guess maybe it's like per connection now? I'm not sure. Let's try to see in the documentation um, where, I guess I can just search for this part. I'll just search PGX pool. Um, so a con has query, it has exact, but none of it doesn't have prepare. A transaction has prepare. Did we just get rid of prepare on pools? That would be sort of problematic because I think in this particular case, we do actually like the fact that we can prepare something on a pool. Uh, hmm. Well, that's a little bit mysterious. Where do we use this prepare X stuff? We use it in SQL runner dot init. If SR dot method, what is this? SQL runner. I guess this is part of workload. So workload is this package that we use to run workloads against the database. And I guess um, sometimes people want to prepare stuff ahead of time, for something, string to method, flags.method. Do people actually set this to be prepare anywhere or is it just sort of made up? String bar method equals prepare. Oh, wow. So I see, so it's like actually a flag that you can set on the command line. Is that what's going on here? Let's, I think, I think, hmm, I kind of want to just have this one not work for the time being because I don't think it's like super critical. Uh, I'm just gonna stick a panic here. This isn't supported. Hey, Sean, what's up? How you doing? How's, how's your Sunday? We're just doing some library upgrading. It's really fun. We love to upgrade libraries on this stream. We've done it so many times. The key to library upgrading is that you just make everything error, just like comment it out. <laughs> Actually, yeah, so like this is an example. Why am I bothering commenting all this crap out individually when I can just comment the entire method out at once? It's the dream. Okay, solid. So that was a really efficient way of deleting much of this. Okay, and look at this, this, this is very funny. Like supposedly you can pass in these options, but then like nothing even uses it in the old method. Oh wait, no, I did, and I just commented out. That is fine. Let's just let's just move on from this problem. Let's just move right on. The schedule works much better than the Friday afternoon stream. Yeah, <laughs> you're probably right. Um, it's I've been thinking about that scheduling stuff lately, and uh, it's a little bit hard for me to figure out a good schedule because realistically. My work, I'm very lucky that my work has this sort of flexible Friday time thing built into it. So that's why I've decided to do the streaming on that Friday, because I'm still like at work, I'm doing a side project kind of thing. It's easy for me, but it's not so easy for my viewers. What viewers, you might ask? I don't know, you, you're, you're an example. Uh, thank you for tuning in, by the way. But um, yeah, I don't know, I might try out both. I was thinking I would maybe do a Friday and a Sunday, but we'll, we'll kind of see. You might go look for a more robust engineering stream. Ouch, dude. Major ouch. Uh, simple protocol opt. Okay, so why change to PGX? Okay, so it's great reason. I explained it a little bit earlier and I'm happy to re-explain it for you, Scythe. Nice to see you, how you're doing. Um, basically, check this out. LibPQ is the like Golang classic, the classic Golang uh, connection library. It's kind of like, sorry, Postgres, stay focused. It's the classic Postgres connection library. It comes with Postgres. Uh, it's like a C thing. Go has a copy of it. Um, for whatever reason, the version in Go, it doesn't give you back some essential information like the type OIDs of each of the columns of a query. The type OIDs. And why is that important? It's because, check this out. Let's say I was, this is why I, I got really frustrated and wanted to do this in the first place. It's kind of like a long, 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 Yak shape. But check this out. If I have a table um, like this, A and B string, whoops, what did I do? I have to call it something. And I said select star from A. Actually, let's insert some data. Insert into A values, one, two. Select star from A. Okay, so if I have this, um, I know that this type is an integer, type A, or column A is an integer, and type column B is a string. And I can actually find out also by saying explain. Uh, types select star from eight. 
it'll tell me A is an int and B is a string like this, which is great. The thing is that in Postgres world and in CockroachDB world, there's all of this much more advanced type information that you actually kind of need to have a lot of the time called the type OIDs, um, which you can get with like some weird stuff. I can say select star from PG type where uh, OID or wait, tip name equals int eight int integer. Uh, Oh, I put it in a quote. That's the problem. Maybe. An eight? Come on, we can do it. There we go. Okay, that took like way too many queries, but in any case, check this out. This is the type of int eight. It has this special magic number 20, and sometimes you need to know this magic number. Back to reality though. LibPQ, it doesn't give you access to the number that gets returned, even though on every query, the server actually gives you back that OID. And so debugging when this stuff is going wrong is very annoying because you have to inspect the raw protocol packets. PGX, back to PGX. The magic of PGX is that it gives you way more information. It tells you all sorts of stuff. It tells you everything that the connection gives back to you. It can do notices, it can do notify. It does all this advanced stuff. And we actually already use it internally in the database in a couple of places. But here's the thing, uh, it got a little bit out of date with some stuff and the newest version of pgx we need it for one of these things but we couldn't update because we didn't use go modules okay so that was like the longest longest rabbit hole of all time wanted to do this needed to get go modules we started adding go modules that was kind of working so this is all rebased on top of adding go modules how is it performance wise i'm sure it's fine like i don't think it even really necessarily is too different performance wise from libpq I'm not even really concerned with the performance of this right now. I'm just concerned with the functionality. And libpq is just not quite as robust. PGX is quite nice. It's really programmed very nicely. And I don't know if uh, Jack C is even watching. I tagged him on Twitter. He has, I, I found him on Twitter just so I could tag him and, and tell him I was, I was upgrading to his library. But it's a very, very good library. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, it's just kind of well done. So anyway, this stream is about me trying to upgrade to the two things at once. Upgrade to the newer version of PGX. That's objective one. And then objective two is upgrade all old usages of libpq to use pgx, okay? There we go. So one of the problems though <laughs> of upgrading is that a bunch of the APIs did in fact change. So, oops, sorry for the bright screen. Uh, I wish I could, I wish there was a Godoc theme that was dark, that would be sort of nice. One of the things that I wanted to do is try to figure out like, um, how do I, yeah, so, so some of the, structs and packages and whatnot got refactored. Um, and it's hard for me to figure out where everything lives. For example, this query EX options thing, in order to figure that out, I have to kind of figure out like, what is the new method for exec called? I guess they just got rid of X. Um, pool now takes an exec and it takes arguments, but no options. So this is a bit different than what we had before. Before we were able to pass in this thing called simple protocol opt, which says, use the simple protocol. And now it doesn't seem like we're able to do that anymore, which is slightly mysterious to me. Um, what's the deal with that? One might ask. One might ask that. Um, let us check this out. We're going back to their GitHub so we can figure out what they want us to do here. It sort of seems like, it sort of seems like they maybe got rid of some of these options. What if, okay, let's, let's just, uh, what if I have a, down here in some random method, let's say I have a pgx.con uh, uh, and I said c dot, how do I get those options, my dudes? Where are those options at? Did they get rid of that? Begin ex has some options, but this is transaction options, which seems different. ISO level, isolation level, access mode, deferrable mode. That's not really what we care about. What we care about is the um, the connection options or whatever. Like, where do I actually, where can I specify the type of protocol that we're using? Maybe that's done on the connection. That would actually make more sense. Like maybe when we specify the connection, we actually change some of these options. What is inside of con config, for example? It's got a pgcon.config. See you later, J1. Enjoy your day at work. I hope it's really great. I'll talk to you later. Um, 
got some configs, but none of these are the configs that I was expecting to see, you know? Is there like a protocol? Thanks for the follow. Hey, what's up? Alex, nice to see you. Hey, Chompas, Chompas. I don't know how to say your last name. I hope you're doing well, man. Happy Sunday. Uh, we're trying to figure out where these connection options are at in this new incarnation of PGX. And we're kind of struggling. What if I search for extended inside of their GitHub? Would that be something that would help us? Would it say extended protocol somewhere? Or would it just not? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's really quite mysterious to me what they might have done with this stuff. Do you think, do you think that maybe it's gonna be inside of the, the, one of the things that they did is they separated the main library from this PGCon library. PGCon is a lower level PostgreSQL database driver that operates at nearly the same layer as the C library, libpq. So maybe this is actually the library that has this extended protocol business. Could that be the case? Let's say something like extended protocol limited to 65,000 parameters. Okay, so could I, could I, could I, what? Here's a test that's testing some stuff with this extended protocol. But how do they know that what they're sending is extended protocol in the first place? It seemed to me that what they do is say pgcon.connect, just all regular style. They don't specify any parameters. They don't do anything fancy or special. So so maybe maybe we've just lost this flexibility and it always does something in a certain way. I'm not really sure. Um, I wonder, hmm, I guess I could, I could, I could open an issue. I could open an issue. <laughs> As I say that, here's something that's very relevant. It's a, it's a field called prefer simple, simple protocol, which disables implicit prepared state usage. By default, PGX automatically uses the extended protocol. I don't know, does this even matter? Does this even matter? Why are we passing? Why? Why? Why is this important? I see, it's because somebody at some point wanted to be able to sometimes prepare a statement first, sometimes not prepare a statement, and then sometimes call the statement in simple mode. I just don't know, man, like is this, do I have to care about this stuff? I don't get it. It's H. H is a statement handle, and depending on this method, we do different things. Does anybody actually set this thing? This is what I was looking at before. Does anybody actually set this thing to not just the standard? And last time I think we found out, right, this was the thing that was set by the, by the command line flag. Yeah, results should be the same. I mean, I just don't want to mess with the, the guy who's, or the whoever is like messing with this stuff. Um, it's like, it's like, why are they, why does this even exist? You know, I don't want to just delete all that code in, in case somebody actually wanted to use it. The fields below are set by init. Flags that method. You see, so, so check this, man. Like it's con flags. This thing is literally a command line flag. You can say, when you run workload, which is what this thing is for, you can say workload dash method, and you can change it to be simple, no prepare, prepare. Yeah. I don't know. It's a little bit scary actually, because I just realized that the default is prepare. And this, this that's the one that we like deleted. <laughs> we just panicked and says this isn't supported. So I don't think that's actually gonna fly. Um, I don't think that that's gonna fly. I just think that this API, ah, uh, this is troublesome. This is troublesome. Um, so, I guess, I guess what I probably wanna do though, is just have this run. 
has a given statement as well. We, we actually have to figure out, like, that, that's just what we have to do. We have to figure out how to prepare a statement on a pool in New World of PG Con thing. That's what we have to do. Prepare creates a prepared statement. I guess. You are the author of prepared statements for a test. That's awesome. Yeah, I think I, I I think I added something related to prepared statements in CockroachDB as well. It's I think I added the thing that, you know how you can do it in SQL. Uh, I think this didn't exist, and then I added it at some point. Execute X. I don't know, but the, like the, some of the back end was already working. I can't really remember what I did. Um, what what I'm still uh, this is so annoying. This is such a dumb problem to be stuck on. But basically like. What this is supposed to be doing is running a prepare, like running a prepare, a pre-prepare on each of the connections on each of the pools, right? And it's like what we what we have what we had before was a thing that let you. There was an API on the pool itself that let you do this, um, but what seems to have happened is that the API moved to being only on the connection, and I'm a little bit upset about that. I don't know how to. Well, I just don't know what the intent of this code was. Um, so, so what what happens over here? This is in init. We run prepare on everything, and then later we can use it. So the idea is that, yeah. So how do I get a prepared statement back according to before? What editor is this? This is GoLang. So this is like the Intelli. I don't know if you've heard of IntelliJ or JetBrains, but this is sort of the GoLang. Um, JetBrains editor thing. It's pretty good. Um, I'm pretty. I'm, I'm kind of used to the JetBrains world, so I like it a lot. I know some people think that the editor or the IDE thing is a little bit too heavyweight or something. I'm not. That's not me. But um, thanks for the follow, man. Um, I do enjoy the faster way of looking stuff up. I don't know. I find that like just for me working on a big project, it can be a little bit slow to do find usages and stuff and, and things that aren't like big, fat, heavy IEDs, but I don't know. Neo Vim plus Tmux, yeah. I used to be a Vim diehard myself, like very diehard. I would like stop at nothing, make sure that my stuff worked with Vim and only Vim, but I sort of gave that up at a certain point. I think, I think Go is actually fine to use with Vim um, for like reasonably sized projects. Like they have some pretty decent um, plugins for it. I just think that this project is a database that's quite, it's just got a lot of code in it and it kind of gets a little laggy in my Vim. So I can't, for me, it just doesn't quite work, but I think it'll probably work uh, on smaller projects. Um, anyway, so how do I, it kind of looks like you use Vimgo, but Go please takes 30 gigs of RAM when I load cockroach source code. Bro Honster, what's up? Did I land the Go module stuff? I did not land it. I just, I probably should work on that, but I was just frustrated. Um, and I kind of want to just try out making the PGX thing work, but I'm having real struggles, real struggles. The current problem that I'm working on right now is that uh, it used to be possible to prepare a statement on a pool. And now it's not possible to do that. Now you can only prepare a statement on a connection. So in workload, uh, which is this tool that we use for load testing, uh, everybody expects that you can prepare something on a pool and you can use just this one handle to run the prepared statement on any connection. 
but we don't seem to have that flexibility anymore, so it's like a real problem. I don't know. I don't really know what to do about it. So what am I talking about? Basically, like over here in this PGX helpers thing, we have this prepare EX guy. Um, and it used to be the case that we could run this. P is a pool, we could say p.prepare, and it would give us back a handle onto a prepare statement on the whole pool. Now we can't do that, I don't know what to do. This playlist is awesome, thanks man. This is, uh, it's, it's, it's called Duchess Live. I'll drop a link to it, because I think it's dumb, dope as well. I've listened to this one a lot in my life. I just think it's really fun. You know, it's actually a funny story. I, I found this stream, legitimately, I kid you not, I found this stream from a Lyft driver in San Francisco, who I think might have been on drugs when he drove me to the airport. It was like in the middle of the night uh, that my flight was taking off at like 5 a.m. or something like that, San Francisco time. And I get into this lift for this guy and he puts on this playlist. He's like, guys, like check this out. This playlist is amazing. Uh, and then he, he's like, don't, don't be too scared because I like to drive really fast on the highway. And we're like, okay. And he starts to drive like super fast, uh, but it wasn't actually that fast. It was weird, but this, in any case, this was a great playlist. It was on in the car and I looked at it on his dashboard and I was like, I have to remember the name of this. Duchess Live. <laughs> That's how I know about this playlist. Yeah, it's a good story. Um, but anyway, so like, what's the deal? So so it used to be that prepare EX, what would it give us back? It would give us this PS thing. It doesn't matter which prepared statement we return, they should contain the same information. What does that even mean? Maybe, maybe it's that, like, what this is saying is that once.do, if error is not equal to nil, once.do run. What? What? Dude, what is this? What is this? It's saying for every pool, run a go routine? No, man, it's, it's, it's saying, like, for every pool, run this thing in a go routine for some reason, and then pick whichever one is the first one that comes back, which I find really bizarre. I, let's figure out like what this thing used to do in the old PDX, just out of curiosity, um, which I think I still have. Uh, Jaxi PGX con pool .go. Um, uh, What is this called? It's called prepare EX. MD Layer, what's up? How did the streaming API integration go on Friday? It went, it went well enough. I think uh, I kind of like plumbed everything down. That was working fine. And I got the database to compile and mostly run with the streaming API, which is cool. Um, but there was a bunch of little problems. And I figured that before I continued down that rabbit hole, I sort of wanted to get a review from somebody else, which is why I'm not looking at it again right now. Um, I do want to come back to that, and I, I really want to. I really want to, because it's so important, but I just, today is not the day. So, so, um, so right now I'm trying to figure out, I don't know if you've used this PGX library, I'm trying to upgrade it from V3 to V4, and um, one of the things that they did is get rid of the prepare method on connection pool. And we used to use that, and I don't know why. I'm trying to figure. Okay, so prepare ex creates a prepared statement on a connection in the pool to test that the statement is valid. If it succeeds, all connections accessed through the pool will have the statement available. So that's like that's like a little bit black magic. I guess it does a loop. Does it do a loop, or does it just pick one of them? Um, it says give me any connection, and then prepare it, and then it says for each connection prepare it, and then store it in a map. That's so annoying. So they legitimately like just got rid of that altogether. That's like slightly shocking. I just don't know why they would do that. I don't understand why they would do that. And it's a little bit sad. Uh, I'm also slightly confused about why the version number here says this like pre 1.0 thing. I don't know if you can see at the very top of my screen. It's really, really, really tiny. So you probably can't, but it says, Jaxi PGX V4 at V400 dash pre 1.0 2019 something something. I feel like that means something is unhappy. Um, and I am a total Go module newbie, so I wonder if something's just totally wrong. Oh yeah, the problem is that I just have an old version of it here. So how do I get a newer version? Um, PGX V4. Uh, 
D4.6.0. I guess I just say, I think maybe, maybe they just like fix this, you guys. And I was, I've just been like wasting time because, um, I have had the wrong Go module version of my thing. Go get dash U. I'm a little bit afraid to do this because I'm also in the middle of this big module refactor thing, but we'll see what happens. What happened? Cockroach is out of package and module rooted at something something. I don't know what the deal is with that. I'm just gonna do go mod better. This has been working for me. I don't know if it's the right thing to do. <laughs> We've been using depth, by the way, for a really long time. So go modules is like new for me and slightly scary and wrong. Okay, so it's doing some stuff. You know, maybe this is just gonna fix my entire problem. Wouldn't that be really, really, really nice? <laughs> Wouldn't that be really nice if this whole time I was just struggling and it was just because I was on an old version of this library? Um, it does not appear that that would be the case though. <laughs> okay, maybe, I mean, maybe we just, maybe for whatever reason, we just kind of have to implement that ourselves. I'm gonna do this grep suggestion. When do you think Cockroach would move fully to Go modules? We're trying to do that right now. That's the goal. There's a PR out, and in my opinion, it should get in. Um, Jack C. Uh, okay, so we've got some in Con, which is we know about those. We've got some in PG Con, which we know about. Statement cache. I think that's probably per connection as well. We've got per transaction per pairs. And we've got per transaction per pairs in PGX pool, which is this thing we're using, but we don't have. This just, this API just got deleted. <laughs> that's a bummer. A few magic Go module moments on stream today and ended up having to close VS Code and edit things with Nana briefly so Go PLS wouldn't fight me, huh? Yeah, I, I don't know that <laughs> but it sounds brutal um, so yeah I mean now it's complaining now it's complaining that this prepared statement thing doesn't exist anymore what happened what happened oh I'm so lost and confused and sad I see. So con prepare now returns something called a pgcon.statement description. Maybe this is like not the best thing to upgrade right now. I don't know. Maybe this is just like too radical. pgcon.statement description. Are my dot files public? Yeah, they are. Um, if you go to my GitHub, I think it's called. Config. Confi uh, yeah, try that out. GitHub's in my profile, so I think you should find it there, hopefully. Um, they really, I mean, this I, API I really changed quite a lot. Um, really did change quite a lot. Um, oh, I see. Wait, this was supposed to be, this was my prepare guide. All right, so let's actually, since this isn't really working out, let's try to see what was the intent of this. We were supposed to just store a single prepared statement in our statement. I think it's fine. Maybe like realistically, all we wanted was just like the sort of information about it or something like that. And that it's fine to just ask for one of them. So I'm gonna try that out. Instead of trying to prepare it on the whole thing, we're gonna acquire a connection. So we'll do p.acquireCTX. Um, and then we'll say con. Uh, Con.con? I don't know, man. This feels weird. This feels weird. So it takes name and SQL. Um, and no ops. Um, description is equal to this. And for whatever reason, we have this. What is wrong with this? This has an error, too. Um, For whatever reason, does this also give me an error back? It does. Um, so we're gonna set this res thing to desk and we'll see how this works out. I don't exactly understand what I'm doing here, but 
think that's fine. Have I heard of Yabai? I have heard of that. Why do I know what that is? Is it some kind of like desktop window manager thing for Mac or something? I think I tried this out and I didn't like it at all, but I might've like screwed up how to install it or something like that. Um, I was trying to like get something better for like splitting windows and stuff, but honestly like tiling window managers, I've never fully grokked them. So yeah. Okay, so simple protocol opt. This is the thing where I couldn't quite figure out. I think in this case, what we wanna do, if we really wanted to support this, which I think these are the ones that we just are gonna ignore for the moment. So maybe I just don't have to talk about it. Um, uh, if we wanted to support this, I think we would have to actually do it at the connection level and not at the statement level. Um, so, yeah, and I think, okay, so pgx command tag, I think this is gonna be pgcon.command tag now. It was a bit to config, but you're really enjoying it now. So what does it do for you exactly? What do you use it for? Um, arguments nil, I think what we want is this instead. Okay, so pgcon.command tag, I guess we could search for pgx. tag and replace it with pgcon.command tag. pgcon.command tag. Maybe the, did I already just, maybe I busted all the, the, the instances of that already. You can navigate desktops easily like the native Mac workspaces. Yeah, I think, or, or like, what are these called? Spaces? Yeah. Honestly, I never got a hang of that stuff and I find it overwhelming. <laughs> um, okay, so tx dot exec x does not exist anymore for some reason. What does exist on this? TX is like not a thing now? What is this? TX is an interface, represents a transaction. It should exist. Oh, I see. It's now a interface and not a struct. So maybe I have to pass it as a non-pointer. Resize windows, create splits, etc. It's just Tmux for your desktop. Yeah, I mean, I think that's cool. I don't know. I just find for me that I can't keep it all in my brain that well for some reason. And I just end up command tabbing everything and that's like just fine. Um, I feel like these TXs are now all gonna become something slightly different. Begin EX. So this is giving me back a pgx.pool.pool. And what I want is a transaction. So I guess I pass this. Um, man, I feel like this stuff is quite deep, honestly. pgx.tx options. This now takes a pgx.tx option, which is not a pointer. I don't know why that had to change. Maybe it turned into interfaces and it used to be structs or something like that. I'm the same way. I have even have trouble using multiple monitors fluently. Yeah, my current setup for multiple monitors, I, I like it a lot. It's just, there's one on the top and one on the bottom. And what you're seeing right now on the screen is my big monitor. And where I have OBS and my chat and stuff is my laptop that sits sort of below my monitor. So it's all vertical. I had a problem for a while where I was like, I would have my laptop on the side of my computer. So I would be like turning my head all the time. And I think I got sort of neck pain. Um, and that didn't really work out for me. Give me three 4K displays to give me death. That's intense. <laughs> Hashtag extra. Uh, allowing PGX transactions to be used within execution TX. Why would this be necessary at all? I have no clue, but I guess it's not a pointer anymore because it all turned into a interface type. What's wrong with this? Can I use workload PDX as type TX? Oh, did this used to just embed it or something? And now, man, what is the point of all this? I'm so lost. Um, oh, oh, oh. I guess.
what the heck? <laughs> Whatever we did here is some wacky, wacky, wacky stuff. I was diehard source code pro for a long time, switched to Fire Mana recently. Do you like Office Code Pro? I've never heard of Office Code Pro. Is that a good font? PGX TX is a thin wrapper that implements the CRDB TX in interface, allowing PGX transactions to be used with, with execute in TX. I'm not sure why that's important. Uh, I'm going to try to ignore that stuff for the time being and see what happens in classic fashion. Um, let's go back to where we were at. So let's just pass, instead of passing whatever casted crap we have here, we're just going to pass the TX itself and see what goes wrong with that. So this is... Oh, I see. This is some, like, rapper guy. Iosefka. What terminal is everyone using? Bang term. I need to get a bang term. Oh, that's not a bang. That's an I. <laughs> yeah, I use I term as well. Um... I see. So this TX stuff is it? Oh my gosh! This is this is this is this is gonna be a lot. So before, I guess what I want to actually do here is wrap it or something like that. What it was, what it was doing before was taking this struct that was a concrete struct that was giving us given back to us by PGX. It was taking it and turning it into a PGXTX that contains a bunch of extra methods. How do you, how do you like, what, what is that about? Can you have an interface type in Go that like wraps another interface type like that? Or would I want to really change this to be type PGXTX struct and then just embed PGX.TX? I feel like that's what we really want to do. And then over here, we would want to say, like this or something. Uh, I turn running Vim and Tmux was so laggy for me. Such an alacrity and love it. I used to be super into customizing all this stuff. Yeah, same. This was me. I, I spent like ages doing this stuff in high school. Just ages. And then whatever I got at the end of high school is just what I've stuck to permanently now. Just like forever. And I've never, yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I just, for some reason, sort of lost the effort. Um, okay, so it's saying execute in TX runs function inside TX, which already should have begun. Do not do such and such and such. I see, so it automatically commits it. I just, uh, uh, brutal. Yeah, exactly, still using all my bot files, bot files for freshman year. Not sure if I know context, but embedding has bit my teams a few times by promoting methods for things like mutex locking, yuck. Yeah, I'm a little bit lost myself, to be honest. I think what was happening before, and what I really don't understand is how this changed. So what it used to be is that this begin TX thing would return pgx.tx, which used to be a struct. So this thing used to be a struct, um, and it would return a pointer to the struct. And what we used to have is this little wrapper um, that, I guess, where was it? This little wrapper guy. Come back, Mr. Wrapper. Where did you go? Um, the wrapper was. <laughs> Does this ever happen to you guys? Just like get completely lost within the, the tabs that you're at? We have this wrapper called PGXTX that used to look just like type PGX and then it was like a, a an alias, I guess. Is that what this is called? Type PGX and then something else. Um, and then we added extra methods on top of this thing. And now that doesn't seem to be valid anymore because it turned into an interface or something like that. Um, I don't really know. Yeah, since, yeah, 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 exactly. Right, so we had a struct alias and you can't have a interface alias or you can't implement methods on interfaces. That's the problem. So I think this is, I mean, I think this is sort of the intent of what we had before to turn this into a struct. So I, I'm gonna like kind of power through with it and see what happens. Um, but I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't really know. 
And I think in this case, I don't need to do this stuff anymore. I can just say, no, that doesn't work. Oh, it's because they got rid of exec X, I guess. Um, okay, so yeah, this is gonna be a bit of a cleanup, I guess, maybe. Is this a cleanup or is it not a cleanup? I see, and in this case, I have to... <laughs> Why would I have to do this? Can't I just, I mean, this is now just going to delegate since I've embedded the field. All of this stuff is, is now automatically delegated, I think. So maybe that's a little bit simpler, I don't know. So crdb.tx is equal to this. This is no longer working, why? It's because it doesn't have a commit error struct. That is mysterious. That is mysterious. Oh, I see, it's because I would need to, no, I don't see. I thought that this would have a, what does it say? It says, doesn't not implement crdb.tx if some methods are missing, commit error. Now, I, cause it takes a context. Oh dear, oh dear Lord. <laughs> so whatever this guy is, now this is an external library. You guys, you guys, I'm in deep. This is really problematic. Um, I guess I can just put context.to do for now <laughs> and hope that the gods of stuff just don't kill me too badly. Or I see, I guess I would just not pass in any context or something like that. No, I, put, I pass in context.to do. And then commit would just be like completely broken. That's fine, right? Um, uh, so I would have to call like tx.commit with context dot to do or something like that. Oh, but I can't do that because it's the same name. The, dude, this is such a disaster. This is such an absolute disaster, right? Because I can't call. Can I have an overload that has a method of the same name that takes different arguments? I guess I can. That's wacky. That's so wacky. Yeah, you can do tx.commit, but like, I'm saying that the caller of this thing, <laughs> normally the caller of this thing would be able to see tx.inner commit, right? But I guess it can't since it's got an overridden one with no arguments or something like that. I don't know. That's rather scary to me. Uh, what else is missing? Now the rollback I see. So the rollback has exactly the same problem. I'll just, uh, Over here, I'll say tx.tx.rollback.context.to. And then, <laughs> yeah, big yikes, big yikes. Okay, so coming back to where we were at, um, what else is now problematic here? tx.ops is a pgx.txoptions, which got unpointered for like whatever random reason in this, in this, uh, API upgrade. Cool, okay, so that compiles. Um, I guess now we have to figure out what happened in this sort of mangled up hell hole. Um, oh yeah, this is the thing where it used to take these options and it no longer does because the options are now present on the uh, connection instead. So this is actually an easy fix. Just get rid of this stuff. Right, except for this. I think this is where, right, we're, we've just decided that no prepare and simple are not gonna be supported for now. And we only support the default, which is prepare. Since you're embedding all methods of pgx.tx, should be promoted and available on your wrapper type. Yeah, except, here's the thing that is confusing to me. I think the one that's missing is commit, because commit has a uh, implementation on my wrapper that has a different set of parameters. And since it has the same name and Go doesn't let you have like overloaded or whatever you call those things, polymorphic methods, I think it just picks the most recent one. I'm gonna click that link. I hope it doesn't TOS me. <laughs> you can put anything you want into this link. So scary. Uh, takes the wrapper. It doesn't compile though. I see. 
Yeah, right. Weird. Weird, 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 weird. Okay, so we've decided that these ones are unsupported because we would need to pass these options on the connection instead of on the... Oops, come back. Okay, so a bunch of exact same things to do a couple times. No problemo. That's OP. Big Strong Cooch. <laughs> That's an awesome name. Okay, what's wrong with this? All right, it's because this no longer is a pointer that we're getting passed in. Um, it is just this interface. I think it's the same problem here. Um, no, just need to get rid of these extraneous options now. Okay, what's the matter with you? You take context, sequel, and args, and I'm also passing in some name thing. What is this? This doesn't seem right. This used to be what? Pair.name? Oh, it's, everything got turned into an interface, so I can't be passing in, passing back these pgx.rows as a pointer. Very, very familiar to my last stream, isn't it? Very, very familiar. Okay, uh, fix up this guy, same thing, basically. Um, and what is your problem? Probably same thing, this is gonna be an interface now, right? Yes. Okay. Last one to do is returning a non-interface. This no longer has options get rid of this comment so we can comment the whole thing out. Okay, now what is your problem? Your problem is that you take a non-pointer again. All right, simple protocol opt is going to be commented out. Okay, solid, so this file is good to go. Um, now I bet if we try to say make bin workload, a bunch of stuff will fail. I think this will be an easier way to figure out what's going on than searching through the IDE for things with red. So I'll find out. Yes, all sorts of broken stuff. Okay, cool, 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 cool. Delivery.go. Who in the chat knows about TPCC? Give us a, give us a TPCC emote. I need to get it. That'd be sick. First step, first step I have to get emotes, but then I wanna add some good database joke emotes, so it'd be fun. Okay, so begin to take to context and note TX ops. Is this important though? <laughs> what is that little guy? Mr. Destructoid. I don't know any Twitch global emotes besides the like really common, obvious ones. It just takes, it has an ISO level and access mode and deferrable mode. What did we use to set? What did we use to, oh, we set it as serializable, but we're always serializable. Oh, it's because probably we were testing against Postgres 2. Okay, so we're good. We just leave this alone, I guess, and we can probably just set the connection up up front with that if we need to later. Um, PogChamp, we know about, we know about PogChamp. We love PogChamp. Okay, so this is now going to be, we're gonna make a fresh one, PGX, TX, uh, TX, TX. I guess I should make a little new method for that. Unfortunately, MD layer is my Twitch alt, so I don't have a lot of my sub emotes available. Is, is This is like your programming stream alt that you use for programming streams, I guess. Um, punk, uh, new PGX, TX, PGX.TX. PGX, PGX, return. This is like the most repeat yourself thing I've ever seen. PGX, TX, TX, TX. That's a, a real mouthful. New PGX, TX returns a 
wrapped pgx.tx that implements the crdb.tx interface. I have one that I used a gaming username for gaming streams and decided to go to my typical professional slash programming name for my own. That's cool. I think that's probably wise. Um, workload.new, no? Workload.new pgx tx tx. Cool. I had a friend who, according to him, I don't, I don't actually have a fully verified account of this story, but according to him, and I have reason to believe that it might be true, he was once a influential Twitch gaming streamer, but he became too influential and he got stalkers. So he had to delete his entire like online identity and like start over from scratch. He like went dark for many years. <laughs> and now he's like starting again with a different Nick, which seems really sad. So maybe it's a good call for you to, uh, when you blow up and become super, super most famous programming streamer. Oh, wait a minute. That's the opposite of what you would want. You've associated your Nick with your real name. So forget what I said. I guess it's like, so when you do gaming stuff, people don't know who it is. Yeah, hopefully never. Hopefully never on that one. Um, all right. So these query TXs just get re replaced with query. So I can just find replace these, these babies. Same with exec ex. Cool. Uh, right, 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 right. Hit up these, whoops, order status. So what happened here? All oh, right, we got we don't pass in TX options anymore. We say workload dot new PGX TX TX. All right, very good, very grand. Payment dot go. <laughs> uh, again, TX. This is like it's a pretty nice. I don't know. Like it, it takes. It takes guts. I think if you're a maintainer of a popular library like PGX, I think it takes some guts to say, I'm gonna go ahead and redo my entire API and change the name of nearly everything <laughs> in the name of like making things cleaner and better. I think it was worth it, but like it takes guts, man, I'm not gonna lie. Because this is a lot of pain. I mean, there's probably a lot of apps that are doing this exact same transformation that I'm doing right now. Um, and I think it takes, it's a little bit, it's a little bit sad that one would have to do such a thing. It'd be kind of cool if when you do a big change like this, you could like ship a, um, like an invocation to like, uh, isn't there some kind of like go auto refactor machine that exists in the world? It'd be cool if you could ship an invocation to that and it would like automatically update all your stuff. Okay, so what, we don't have a context here. That's fun. Do we need one? In it seek num. Looks like we have one from somewhere right above, so we can just pass it in. This is just the most classic thing to do on stream. Plum context. It's such a good time. We love it. We absolutely love it. Tx dot. Okay, this is a pointer. It needs to not be a pointer. Uh, this thing also needs a context. <laughs> Schema change worker does not have a context at all. It has one, but we ignored it. Well, no longer will we ignore it. We're gonna use it. I think that context plumbing would also be a really nice thing that you could do with some sort of magical, like, refactor machine. That'd be pretty sick. Everybody uses these star PGX TXs. And I've got to change all of them.
let's just do a let's do a search replace. This is crazy. What am I doing? What am I doing this for? Uh, star pgx.tx replace with pgx.tx. All right. Query row also always needs a context, so I'll replace uh, query row q with query row ctx comma q macro incoming. I think it's not a bad idea. I'm getting a little bit desensitized to doing these transformations, but realistically, you guys, all of these things that I just changed, there's like 50 methods in here and they all need to take a context. Unless I pass a context inside of this schema change worker thing, but that seems gnarly. I don't like the idea of doing that. It's better to always have your context in your method, I feel, as arguments. Okay, so what if I searched <laughs> TX? I don't think I need a macro for this. All I need is like a search replace. I need to replace begin param TX space PGX dot TX with ctx context dot context comma tx pgx dot tx and see what happens wait did that not do anything why did that not work oh did i need to do i need to backslash my parenthesis thing no oh why did i put query row that makes no sense sorry i, I meant to say place it's just like begin paren tx pgx dot tx with begin paren ctx context dot context. I guess I could use like groups or something if I wanted to be like slightly cooler, but nah. All right, that changed a lot of stuff at once. <laughs> um, and then I guess we also change. Wait, did that just fix everything? No, it didn't. Definitely didn't. Definitely didn't. Rand op. Rand op takes a tx. Oh man, you know what I should have done, you guys? There's this there's this refactoring thing that's actually really, really good where you can change the method parameters or something and it'll automatically change all the invocations and you can pass a default name for the parameter that it passes in. So I could have put CTX, assuming that everybody has a CTX in scope, which then I could have fixed later. But I, fa I failed to do that. So that's fine. TX.commit with nothing becomes TX.commit with CTX. CX dot rollback with nothing becomes TX dot rollback with CTX. Now all of these guys need friends. So this is gonna be a good macro spot, I think. So I'll do QQ, I'll search for TX, I'll put insert CTX, comma, escape, down, end Q. Uh oh, I did add Q. That's a disaster. Okay, let's let's start over. Um, okay, QQ, search for TX, CTX, comma, escape, down Q, add Q, add Q. Okay, that's working. Yay, happy little Vim macros. Oops, that was one too many. I'll do even five at at. Beautiful. Five at at. Two at at. Yes, exactly. I just want to note for the chat that Sartak, big props to Sartak for teaching me pretty much all that I know about Vim macros like 10 plus years ago or so, I want to say. 10 plus years ago, yeah. Like 14, 15 years ago. Shout outs to Sartak, is what I'm gonna say. He also did a really cool game design thing recently for Ludum Dare. And he wrote a blog about it. It's pretty sweet. You guys should check it out. I wonder if people do I wonder if people do streams of playing Ludum Dare uh, games on stream. You know, like in judging them or whatever, because the judges have to do stuff. They have to actually play all the games, right? <laughs> Wait, do the judges play all the games? That'd be crazy. There's like so many games.
but they sure do. Oh my gosh, they should totally stream that. That'd be so fun to watch, maybe. <laughs> um, one thing that the Kaizo Mario people do is that they have level design contests as well, and they play their they play levels. Or I don't know if it's a level design contest. I think it's both contests and like just people play testing each other's stuff. They do that on stream, and that's really fun to watch. Exclusively peer review. Oh, people stream playing LD games. I see, I see, I see. So there are no judges. People peer review each other's things. So how many how many LD games do you have to peer review to be like a good citizen? How many did you review? this, huh? Cannot use conf config as type string? Oh. Oh, I guess it's just really pointless now. They, they got rid of the necessity to do this separately. Well, I'll just keep it, just to make the review a little bit simpler. The judges are the people who submitted games, no more, no less. I'm not sure if I missed an angle on that question. No, 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 you didn't. I, I was just trying to understand. You, you mentioned that the your game gets boosted in the rankings the more you review. And I'm wondering about those rankings. Is that just for players searching to play games? Or is it for reviewers searching to review games? Or is it both? curiosity if we were to open up another terminal here start the database over here uh, delete whatever data we have lying around start the database over here and if I were to run workload kv wait z cockroach bin workload run in it kv would that work or would it crash or would it just do nothing that seems to have worked. Run KV. Okay, but that crashed. So that's cool. Config must be created by parse config. What the heck is that about exactly? So that's PGX helpers line 73. I had a feeling that I was doing something wrong with this, but I wasn't quite sure what it was. Okay, so connect config. Uh, 
but sir, the config was created by parse config. <laughs> uh, what does that mean? Config must be created by parse config. Okay, well, let's, what do you really mean by that? If config dot created by parse config, what? Oh, maybe we just have to say like, like maybe there's a pgx pool dot parse config as well. Yeah, there is. Okay, that was the problem. That's that's weird. That's weird. I'm not really so into it to be perfect. Now. So I can then say concfg dot max cons equals 32 of. Oh, 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 oh. I want to do that over here. Uh, okay, so can I make a copy? Next one's in October. Uh, that is cool. Are you, I guess, are you gonna participate? Concfg is a pointer, so I, I guess I'll have to copy it. Kind of gross. Max cons. Max cons. Where do we use max cons? Does this get copied or does it get big dot max cons. Looks like it, I don't know what it does. I think to be safe, we should probably copy this con CFG before we pass it in and edit it. So we'll say CFG is equal to con CFG. I should too? That's intense. I think I was watching you do your stream a little bit and I had to say that I was impressed by your skills in JavaScript stuff. Um, I think that's what you were using, JavaScript. And you had a lot of really, really good tooling, really good tooling. You were editing stuff and instantly you were seeing changes in the game. And that was really impressive. And I just don't know if I would be able to, I would have to do a lot of pre-work to figure out how to set that up, what engine to use and stuff like that. It would be fun though, you're right. It would be kind of fun to have a side project that's not just like hacking on this database, which I do love doing, but maybe it would be good for me to have a side project. We. Um, so I'll say cfg.maxcons equals in 32 numcons. Um, I hear the hot, hot topic in side projects these days though is Rust stuff. <laughs> That's just what I've noticed from experience. Maybe I should do some Rust programming. Oh, you know, another person who sometimes watches my stream, my friend Paul, he was actually working on seeing what it would be like to make a game in Rust. Oh yeah, I would love to see what you're working on. That would be super cool. Um, whoops, make bin workload, not roach test. I would love to see what you're working on. I think that you tweeted about it, didn't you? I think you tweeted about it. You said that you were working on a side project and it was cool, or maybe you said it in a chat, I can't remember. But I would love to see what you're working on. That sounds interesting to me. Okay, bid workload run KP. Is this working or is it just doing nothing? Kinda seems like it's doing nothing, huh? This is a lot of big fat nothing. So where are we stuck? We're stuck in prepare for some reason. That's kind of weird. What does that mean? So this is the stuff that I was really most confused about, if you recall from that early flailing on the stream. Um, so it's not that surprising that this is totally busted, but it's a little bit sad. Oh, it's because of this wait group business. Why do we have a wait group here? We haven't, you did tweet, but you can get a preview. It's pretty relevant to what I just mentioned about setup. Oh, cool. Very cool. That's exciting. I, I did always, I don't know if you remember when there was all this hype about like light table and that kind of thing, but I really liked all of that stuff. Um, seeing changes instantly reflected in your code or its graphics or what, I think that's very satisfying. I think the more quick the feedback cycle of the project, the more fun it is to work on. So what are we doing here? We're saying for each thing in a pool, we run a go routine, we acquire a connection, we run prepare, and then we return. And I guess this guy's stuck on wait, which means, it means that everybody else hasn't returned yet, I guess. But I don't see anybody else 
a dream of happiness. I don't see anybody else. Oh, here. So it's waiting in a choir. What the heck? What's that about? What is that about? How come we can't acquire stuff? Is it like too early? Is it too early to acquire stuff at this point? Exactly this. I guess that's probably about saying the feedback loop fast equals fun thing. Yeah. I think, yeah, I mean, that's thinking about like work stuff too. It's like the worse your CI cycle is, the worse, the like less likely it is that you even want to do anything, <laughs> uh, which can be sort of sad. So it sort of seems like we have, this happens after we make a connection. So it kind of seems like we should be able to do what we thought we were doing, which is like connect to the database and do stuff. So what's the deal, huh? What is the deal? Let's see if this stack trace is the same. We're stuck in a choir. Thanks to the follow of Count Anaconda. song is nice this is um here i'll dump a link to the mix i do need to set up a little thing that automatically prints out what i'm listening to because people like to want to know what is playing Streamlabs alerts. It's really easy to set up, man. It's really easy. It'll take you like 10 minutes once you look at it. Um, you just like put a little browser source in your OBS. It has a secret link on their website. And you put that link in the browser source and that's like basically it. And then on the website, you can be like, I want to play this GIF. I want to use this sound. But no, you don't have to use it. Streamlabs. That didn't exist on OS X until like one week ago or two weeks ago or something. And I haven't tried it because it looks like slower probably. <laughs> I like the like raw OBS stuff. Um, okay, so what, right, 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 right. Why are we stuck in a choir? What is that about? That's really confusing to me. Um, why are we stuck in a choir? Choir gets a resource from the pool. Oh, this is like some other puddle. That's funny. So they, he named his connection pooling library puddle. You're worried because you're on Linux. Yeah, I think I think it's just, it's really like a nice system. All, a lot of the like streaming stuff is actually set up like that. So it's like, there's no plugins required. It's all just like a little browser window or something like that. I do think that the browser window like takes up a lot of system resources, but I don't think you would have that problem with your beefy beefy streaming machine that you were telling me about. Um, Bound for the reload. Thank you for the follow. That's a cool nickname. Um, maybe maybe I'm just like missing something about the. Why don't I read the documentation for this connection point thing? How about that? Is that a good idea? Is that a good idea? Where's my doc at? Primary way of establishing a connection is with pdxpool.connect. Okay. I think I've done that. This is the only documentation you're giving me. PGX pool implements a nearly, maybe I don't have to use this wire stuff. Is that, is that one? How come this doesn't even have any, this doesn't have a doc string, my dudes. Atomically acquires, maybe acquire is not doing what I think it's doing at all. Maybe, Maybe I don't need to... No, I think I do though, right? Because the whole point of this problem that I was having is that I need to run prepare on something, right? <laughs> uh, and the only thing that this gives me is a method to... 
Okay, let, let's get rid of this like extra concurrency business just for the time being and say before this even runs, where, where was I at? I was at, I just wanna make this really, really dead simple so I can understand what's going on. There's a lot of like random go routines going on in this program that are making things more confusing. Um, so I'm gonna jump to PGX Helpers 156, which is I guess where we were initializing this stuff in the first place. Um, and then I'm gonna just do everything raw right there. Oh wait, what? No, not, not that line. Um, I guess it's SQL Runner 120. SQL Runner 120. Okay, so this is where we are doing our preparation stuff. And so what if right here I say mcp dot get? This gets me my pool, I guess. Then I say acquire CTX. Um, con error is equal to. Does this give me back an error again? Yeah, it does. Error is not good. No. I'll panic, and then I'm just gonna say con dot query ctx select one. Um, I'll say query row, in fact. I just wanna do a sanity check, right? Just to make sure um, that I can, in fact, do something normal. Uh, See, I bet that what's gonna happen here is that, what am I doing? I'm so bad, I can't, my touch typing is strong except for the ampersand, I can't get the ampersand. Um, I think what's gonna happen here is that we're gonna hang in, in a choir again. So what happened here, what's wrong with this? This just gives you back a bro, no error. All right, let's recompile this little buddy little buddy workload and try running it again. Okay, so that's interesting. <laughs> that's not what I thought was gonna happen. So we did actually manage to query the database that time um, without panicking, without doing anything weird. So that what, what happened, and another slightly odd thing, that we did it so many times. I guess it's because there's several statements that we're preparing. I had to remap a couple things on my kinesis because I could never find tilde and equals in their default positions. Yeah. Oh, check this out. Just since since we're just chatting about keyboards, I've been waiting for an excuse to do this really, really lame thing where I um, point this other camera that I have at my keyboard. <laughs> Hold on. This is gonna be super, super, pointless, but also kind of fun. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it. Some of the people on Twitch, they have these like really cool looking like keyboard views. They're like, check it out. I'm always on my keyboard, like so. <laughs> How does it look? Oh man, that bang project thing is super out of date, my friend. It's super, super, super out of date. So the truth is that what we're doing right now is we're upgrading. Uh, the internal connection library of CockroachDB from libpq to a newer version of PGX. Briefly considered setting up a second camera before stream today. What's my peak APM <laughs> for coding? I don't know, man. It's it's real high. Let me tell you. Okay. How about this? Blah, 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 blah. All right. This is actually going to be kind of fun. You you guys tell me if this is really stupid. I'm guessing, yeah. You can see how slowly that I mostly spend time thinking and not typing my keys or something like that. Um, okay, so for each, I still don't quite understand like why this thing does get blocked. It must be because somebody else in a different Go routine has acquired the connection. They haven't released it yet. That would be me. Oh yeah, obviously. It's because I didn't release it, you guys. This is so stupid. I'm literally just like probably not paying attention to the uh, thing. I probably just have to say defer con dot release. Ha ha. Okay. 
classic not releasing problem. You don't think it's stupid? Okay, cool. Um, this actually reminds me that I wanted to also try turning down the brightness on it because I think it's a little bit jarringly bright, and I think I can do that in this app over here. Oh, I don't know. There's like tuning to do with the brightness that I'm not going to do right now. Alright, so if we run KV right now, maybe it'll work this time. It printed out a lot of ones. Um, it's a StarCraft stream now. Yeah, dude, it's a StarCraft stream. <laughs> You're watching my really slow keyboard APM. Um, okay. So let's get rid of this extra acquire stuff because I think this is now breaking my stuff because I don't release it here. So we made some good progress in that we found out that the bug was that I didn't release a connection after I acquired it. Pretty obvious. Pretty obvious. All right, let's see what happens now. Okay, all right. I mean, that's uh, that's progress. <laughs> error at or near KV syntax error sql state. Okay, so what the heck? What did I possibly do? Uh, we can run exec. Oops, v module equals exec log equals two, and this will print out the commands that we're sending, so we can see what's wrong. Exec KV upstart into KV. Okay, but what was the thing that failed, huh? Uh, do we not print out stuff that fails due to syntax errors? That would be annoying. Kind of seems like we don't print out stuff that fails due to syntax errors, which is not great. Maybe if I use...
yeah, the init worked. The init worked fine. Um, yeah, I think it's this. Like, what's kind of weird though is that like it used to say hs.s.prepare.bam as well. Statement handled query. What file is this? This is uh, my text is so big that I can't see a SQL runner. Like, what is the deal with that? It's name and oh, they changed the API, I guess. Wait, did they? What is this? SQL. Oh, 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 no, I know what this is. The problem is that I shouldn't be calling p.exec anymore because I actually have a prepared. This comes back to the stupid prepared statement thing, which is where I have this prepared statement and I should be able to run it somehow. But how do I do that? Do I just have to say p.acquire ctx? It's so gross. I really liked how what we were doing before was so simple. <laughs> um, um, and then I say defer con.release. And then I say con. Now, how do I? Oh, statement cache dot get. Oh my god, this got so bad. Is this for real? Is this for real? How does one do prepared statements in new PDX? Is my question. Exec prepare. No, this can't be it. This, it, there's got to be like a. There's exec prepared, which is called by. Do I pass in the SQL? Is that what's going on? Or... So it used to be that we had this nice cache of named SQL, and now we're supposed to pass in the entire SQL. Could that be for real? That actually be for real. Let's just try it, I guess. Perfect. Except for prepared CTX. No, this can't be right. This can't be right. This is like way too low level to be for real. So this this prepare gives me back a statement description. Okay, what does the documentation say? Prepare creates a prepared statement with the name of SQL. SQL can compare placeholders. It's safe to call prepare multiple times. Fine, but then how do I like reuse this thing later? What does it say on the old documentation website for this? Prepare. I mean, it says also that it will now prepare and cache statements by default. <laughs> so maybe like all of this, we just like work, we used to try to work around all this stuff because it didn't do it by default. And now they've made it really annoying to do prepared statements. Could that be what's going on here? Or is there just like a another way that is there no like exec prepare or something? This is in. Dude, this is wild. Can this be really for real? This can be. Exec prepare. It says. We could not possibly have to do this. There's gotta be tests for this stuff. Okay, let's let's go into the their own tests. Vendor. I guess we can actually just do it from the IP. PGCon. Wait. PGX. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna go I'm gonna go grab. CD vendor. 
GitHub.com. Jack C. Okay, RG prepare. Now, where are my tests at? Where are my tests at? Oh, does vendoring not include the tests? <laughs> Is this just another thing that I'm going to have to learn about for Go modules? It seems possible. So I'll go to Go source GitHub Jaxi RG prepare. Okay. Um, now this is so this is the low level API bit where you actually have to pass byte slices, which does not feel correct. There's got to be a way to do this at a higher level. Contest here, prepared statement to not return expected value. Uh, why don't we look at this? What does this test do? It says con dot prepare. Oh what? Oh, this is crazy. Okay, so here's what's going on. What it does now is you don't actually have to store the prepared statement yourself. All you have to do, <laughs> could that be for real? You prepare the statement on the connection and then the connection just does it, sort of. If you do query row again on a query that has the... What? Okay, okay, I know what's going on. You can pass query row the name of a prepared statement. <laughs> Even though the parameter to query row just says like, it says SQL, but you can actually pass it the name of a prepared statement. And I think it'll, I think that will, It's really questionable, right? It's really questionable. I'm gonna try that. I, I, I thought that PGX was good. What happened to you, PGX? Wait, you know what's also really confusing though? Is that this is actually what it was originally. So <laughs> it always had this. We always were doing this, and this was what was failing. We were passing in something called KV, and that's what I was complaining about. But I guess this is actually correct. And maybe this has all just been a complete red herring, which would be really sad for me. Um, it would be really, really quite sad. So let's get rid of this stuff. Let's keep that. What we actually have to do is figure out what the heck it's sending to the server. <laughs> that's, that's actually an important step. And for some reason, I can't quite figure out how to do that. Um, Maybe like executor, where we do the con executor exec. Where do we do the stupid parsing? Con executor parse. Where is parsing at? Where is parsing at? Parse start. Where is this get set? Log it. That's really irritating. That's really quite irritating. Um, I think I'm going to add some logs here. Log dot the event app ctx to parse error. Query error. Uh, like this. And I'm also going to do it in the other spot where we do this. Okay, so now if we just quickly, ooh, but this is not gonna compile, is it because uh, of other problems? That's, this is so annoying. <laughs> we're gonna do Wireshark, that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna, we're just gonna do Wireshark.
think I need to include loop back. Let's try again. Okay. Okay, that worked. So I've gotten an error, which is what I expected to get. Wow, I got a lot of stuff, actually. Um, what would the error have been? The error says, source kv, kv-2. What? <laughs> yeah, it does mean I'm having a bad time. I, I'm having a real bad time. I'm massively still confused about this crazy prepared statement interface that we're using. Literally what you do to use the prepared statement, if I'm understanding this correctly, is that you pass as the parameter that's called SQL, which is a string to this exact thing, by the way, check it out. Exact, take CTX, take SQL, which is a string. Instead of passing SQL there, you actually pass the name of a prepared statement. And I believe that that's actually expected in some way, shape, or form. And yet uh, something about it is not working correctly. So I'm, I'm having a confusing and sad time for sure. Oh, I think I know what it is. No, I totally know what it is, you guys. It's that. Um, since I changed things from being pool bound, like we used to acquire every single connection and then prepare the statement on all the connections. Now we're just doing it on one random one. And I think that's probably what's going on. Does it work if you just hand the prepared statement SQL? Yeah, I'm sure it would. Um, I guess I could try that, but I sort of just want to stay true to this because I don't know, I think I'm close. Um, yeah, so right here, wait, where, where, where was that thing where we acquired? That was, um, what the heck was that called? PGX helpers? So where we do this acquire, I guess we could try using this um, other API that I saw called acquire all idle, and then hope that like we get all of them or something. I'm gonna try this out. <laughs> Careful about typing pseudo password something like keyboard camera. That's a great point. I didn't think of that. That's a really fantastic point. I'm gonna have to, yeah, I'll have to get one of those. I think you have a pretty nice secret overlay, don't you? I like that as an idea. Uh, defer, bunk, or i range cons, cons dot i, oops, cons i dot release. Okay. So we do that, and then we say for i and we just ignore the description. No, I guess we do need it. Uh, is this? Um, we say conda conda prepare. See if this helps. I have a feeling that it might. All right, moment of truth. Yay! Okay, so this is working. One thing that's a little bit suspicious, you guys, is that I'm pretty sure that these numbers are really low compared to what they're supposed to be. <laughs> so I'm hoping that, I mean, I'm wondering if uh, read percent equals 100. What if I do this? No, maybe this is what it's normally. I can't remember. Um, I feel like it's a little low. So this is a little workload, you guys, that um, it just runs like some basic load against a table with a key and a value in it. Oh yeah, good point. I can do it with Cockroach Workload. Cockroach Workload run KV. Let's so we'll do re percent equals 100 on empty database on both of them and see what it is. Okay, so it's like 20k on this one. And then on this one. 
It's 20k, hopefully. I mean, it seems like 5% lower. Like, definitely more than 5% lower. <laughs> Occasionally dump CPU registers to the terminal. Um, that's just because I, I got used to typing control backslash instead of control C to kill stuff because I don't know why. I just did. Um, and in Go, if you do that, if you send a sync quit, it uh, dumps all the stacks and stuff. Um, I don't know. Is this within the margin of error? I can't really tell. This is how you do benchmarking, right, guys? You just stare at numbers. You don't have to actually compare things in any kind of methodical way. So let's see, the ops per second cumulative on this one, which is the new binary, was 15k, and here's the old binary. We're gonna run it for 10 seconds. Yeah, it's for sure different. So something's different and worse, which is disappointing. <laughs> I don't know if it's supposed to get slower. I'm, I'm a little bit confused. I don't think it's supposed to get slower. So maybe there's like a million things that could be going on. Also, like my computer is not really a good one for running benchmarks on right one right now because I'm like trying to do all this video compositing and send it to the internet and stuff. So I, I wouldn't really trust that. Um, no, it really shouldn't get slower over time. That doesn't make any sense. But I also think that this is like the worst computer to run benchmarks on in the entire world at the current moment. This is suspicious though, right? Like. Yeah, out of curiosity, I wonder what would happen if I just stopped doing this prepare mode thing. Um, yeah. It's, I mean, this is, it's, yeah, it's kind of sketchy. I just think that there's no, I, 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 I assign no true meaning to the results of these things. It's like here, here's this little, my machine's just super busy right now. So I bet like when I start running this workload, it probably gets thermal throttled or something. <laughs> Let's try it. So here's, I'm running represent at hundred and then temperature goes to, well, I guess it stays mostly the same. Now I think it's for sure getting throttled. Look at the frequency, the frequency goes down, which I think means that the CPU had to throttle it. So this is bullshit, this is bullshit. <laughs> anyway, I don't know. I think this is good progress. I think I'm going to probably stop now, though, because it's getting kind of late. Um, and I think we made decent progress, though. We made workload compile with the new PDX. And I think next, I guess, would be making the SQL CLI compile, which was sort of the main point of this project. Um, but we'll do that another time. Um, but yeah, the frequency falling with the stops per second. Yeah, it's, it's definitely busted. Rise in time. I would love to make a desktop. Maybe I'll do that. Maybe that'll be my summer project. Um, anyway, thanks guys for hanging out. This was lots of fun. Um, I think I'm going to try to do one on the weekend too now. So like the Friday one is fun and I, I like it a lot uh, for reasons. But I think that it, I don't know if, I, I want to try two audiences. I want to try a weekend audience and like a, um, a, a weekday audience and a weekend audience. So I'm going to try that out. Hope to see you guys sometime soon. Thanks also for hanging out. StarTech, Bro Monster, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. See you guys. Have a great night. Have a good work week. Um, let's 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 raid somebody though, right? Hold on a minute. Don't leave. We're raiding somebody. It's gonna be super fun. We have a giant stream to raid somebody with. Um, can I'm in a raid. Squad. Yeah, we oh, already gosh. see him. We already see him popping in. This person is not a programmer, but he's really fun to watch. So. Uh, Let's uh, say hello and do some non-programming Mario Kaizo world watching together. <laughs> All right. So if you haven't watched this stuff before, it's really fun. I find it soothing. I find it relaxing. It's a good way to chill out. Anyway, thanks, guys. This has been a long exit, but have a great night. I'll see you later.